Hopefully. Well, we have brand new developments this morning leading up to the Bergdahl prisoner swap. We know more. According to reporting by Fox News, top military officials warned the president against the Taliban trade before he did it. Here's the key quote. Senior military officials advised President Obama not to make the Taliban for Bergdahl trade, likening it to, quote, handing over five four-star generals of the Taliban. Oh. So this idea of an exchange was first floated several years ago, and uh, President Obama was advised against it. So he, he clearly bypassed, in, in a big way, the intelligence community in order to greenlight it himself. Yeah, this is not the first time, though, according to others, that the president has ignored some ad advice from top military brass. In fact, uh, General Jack Keane on, on this network saying that the president has routinely not listened to the top military brass when making big intelligence decisions like this. Listen to the general. Here's the issue. General McChrystal, General Petraeus, General Alston, and General Allen and now General Dunford have all made recommendations to this administration on war policy issues in Iraq and Afghanistan and the president has rejected summarily every single one of them dealing with force levels, residual forces, etc. It doesn't surprise me that on an issue as contentious as this is, particularly the generals are close to the fight in the theater, made a recommendation that we should not make this trade and provided the rationale for it and that was ignored and rejected, as has all of their other recommendations over the past four to five years. Yeah, what were they most concerned about? Well, they were most concerned that one of these guys would go back and fight against American forces. These aren't just low-level guys that they would be leading. They would have intelligence that would help them track down and uh, lead charges against American troops. Right, but critics say the king knows best, right? The king knows best, and, and that's why Lindsey Graham and, and even Democrat uh, uh, Dianne Feinstein has, has come out and said, you, you know, this, this, was, this was a bad deal, and we should have known about this before. Why didn't you, why did you leave us in the dark and do all this by And he's yourself. explained why, because there would be, quote, political hurdles, he felt, coming from Congress were he to admit what he was doing. The interesting thing is, this was an issue in the 2008 campaign, if you remember. In his one of the debates with McCain, the suggestion arose that he might negotiate with terrorists, specifically Hamas. Right. And at the time, then Senator Obama said, I would never negotiate with Hamas. They're a terrorist group that has called for the destruction of Israel. Fair enough, we all thought. Here he's negotiating with a group that has called for the destruction of the United States, but somehow that's okay. Right, no, he didn't at that debate mention Haqqani, but he did say Hamas, that he would be okay. And, but he said specifically, they have called for the destruction of Israel, and right. that's, a, that's a deal killer for us. But it's okay to deal with a group that's called for the destruction of us? It would be How does that work? It would have been interesting to see if he would have gone on the record about that at the time, because now we know one of these guys who got out has uh, spoken to NBC News, and he vowed, this uh, Nurala Nori, uh, his name is uh, Nurala Nori, he's one of the five that were released, he has vowed to go back, and after arriving in Qatar, according to this NBC News piece, Nurala Nori kept insisting that he would go to uh, the American, to fight against the American forces there. He would go back, and he couldn't wait to get back and fight against the American forces again. Yeah, this is this was a, a relative of one of the five who was speaking out to NBC. Also, we heard an interview with Time Magazine with a, a member of the Taliban who who was speaking anonymously, but said, uh, "Now the, the, you are you are number one, recognizing our group. So this is a victory for us. We're doing a victory lap. And number two, we're going to kidnap more people." Yeah, it's unbelievable. Despite all of this, and this really has been a firestorm, this is one of those stories you, you couldn't have predicted just how much traction this would get in the press. It's, it's, it's hurt the president, it's hurt the Democrats. The president was asked, well, you know, how do you feel about it now, now that all of this has come to light? And here's what he said. We saw an opportunity and we took it. Uh, and I make no apologies for it. Uh, it was a unanimous decision uh, among uh, my principals in my government and uh, a view that was shared by my uh, the members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and uh, this is something that I would do again, and I will continue to uh, do wherever I have an opportunity if I have uh, a member of our military who's uh, in captivity. We're going to try to get him out. So uh, one, go back, rewind one week. Would the president have done exactly what he did, which was have this Rose Garden press conference with the parents of the Berg dolls, get up there in the front of the microphone, and then the very next day have Susan Rice go out on the talk shows to talk about uh, this release? Would they have done it the exact same way? To claim that Bo Berg dolls served with distinction, he was captured in uniform, all of which is not true. Would the president say again, it's my government? It's not your government, by the way, Mr. 
president. It's a government that belongs to all 315 million Americans. Right. It's and not that, yours. And maybe that's the problem. When you start to think it's yours, you make unilateral decisions, blowing off, violating the law. To not and Congress, yeah, not, not even talking to Congress about it, not even giving them the heads up about it. You can't even trust your own Congress because we were worried that it might, it might uh, jeopardize the mission that if members of Congress leaked information to the Taliban? That's what they were most concerned about? But also this week, the president saying this is just a whipped up controversy and he's not surprised that he's getting criticism for this. Well, Mr. President, if this is a whipped up controversy, is, is, is the VA scandal a whipped up controversy too when you've got folks on both sides of the aisle laying down the hammer on this one? Now, much more on this it's throughout the show right this now. morning. Plus, Governor Huckabee will be up a little bit later in the 8 o'clock hour, Fox and Friends. But first, your headlines. Yeah, we have some